Hello again from AM Builds. I've had requests for a construction resource for the shop cart, so here it is. This is the companion video to the review of the TKS 80 table saw, and so please view that one first if you haven't already. I'm sorry, but the subject may not be of interest to most subscribers, although the principles of the build will lend themselves to other portable saw carts if you're contemplating making one. Materials are mainly 18mm birch ply with rounded off edges where appropriate and a length of 63 by 38 CLS for the torsion box and some 12mm ply for the floors of the two sections. The optional drawers are also 12mm ply. Please measure your own saw, determine what eventual height you desire for the table stop and assume I'm a complete numpty that can't read his own handwriting for the dimensions by checking carefully that they will work for you. The front of the saw is where you stand to operate in for orientation and descriptions are viewed from this perspective. So front, left, back and right. My cart was made on the basis that the saw footprint was 663 by 800 millimetres and that was too tight on the larger measurement. So I've added 5 millimetres to the dimensions so that you don't need to router a little bit of the outer layer like I had to. The basis of the cart is essentially an inner box that supports the feet uh, of the frame and the side extension table and a wrap round of a second vertical layer to enclose those saw feet. I cut a piece of 18mm for the base and on it screwed a rectangle of CLS on its side using a scrap of the 18mm ply as a spacer so when populated the base and inner walls are flush. I then put two further pieces of CLS to create a divider to support the saw feet and created a perimeter in both halves of the cart. When installed, the outside dimensions of the inner box fits the dimensions of the saw feet. I screwed the sides on the frame and cut notches out of the centre piece so that it dropped into place. It is full depth. I put some horizontal 5 by 100 screws across the frame to fix this component. I then completed the inner saw box by cutting front and back pieces and installing them with 3.5 by 40mm screws spaced 100mm apart, drilled and countersunk into the sides. I was making up the construction as I went along, but at this stage wanted to mark the support for the extension table. The underside of the front and back V-grooves are proud of the smooth extension's underside and so I marked the width between the V-groove protrusions. I then cut the external skin 50mm above the inner skin and of course remembering to add the 18mm for the thickness of the base. I added 10mm to the finished size of the sides and rounded the inner vertical edges and top as well as the external sides and top. This 5mm protrusion at the corners helps conceal any minor fitting issues as there is a shadow in any event and having some extra material means sanding out a ding is possible. I put a temporary piece to try out the saw and I also made an angled piece for the front right corner but I didn't like that and I changed it later. Once ready to fit the external skin is screwed at the top from the inside and directly to the CLS base at 100 millimeters intervals. I revised the piece for the front right corner to give better support for the right side and screwed it into place. The outer front piece was part fitted and rough cut before using a trimming router bit to match the inner skin. Appropriate edges were rounded and then fitted top and bottom prior to some final shaping. There is not much room for screwing from inside at the front right corner one of these 12 inch chuck extensions from Irwin or the like is a useful get out of jail card here. I cut some 12mm ply for the floors and fitted them screwing them down onto the CLS frame. Removing the left outer side I cut a rectangle in it with my rail saw and jigsaw. I put it back with spacers to assess the aesthetics and was happy with the gaps and I marked a 12mm perimeter on the inside skin. Not wanting to break into another 18mm sheet, I made a frame as a divider using my Domino DF500 and fixed it in place with 4 by 70 mm screws. These fine extra long screws are a handy fixing in the circumstance with a hollow frame, quicker, more accurate and neater than using my pocket hole jig. 
I then had to tidy up the right hand side reducing the top to fit within the v-channels of the saw table. In the end I temporarily screwed a scrap to the edge, drilled a half circle and then removed a segment. After tidying it up and repeating on the other end I fitted the outer skin once again with a 5mm overlap, rough cut the segment before finishing it with a trimmer router. The box was then essentially finished and I just needed to check the levels and flatness of the saw and extension table which luckily for me worked first time. I screwed the base thoroughly to the CLS frame from underneath and fixed six casters with M8 by 50mm coach screws and M8 penny washers. I had four locking ones so I put three along the front and one plus two plain casters on the back. I have put the models and the URL below. That is essentially the main cart done and here are some more photos. The join in the larger floor was not a mistake. I had an offcut that was just short of being big enough and a strip added meant I didn't have to break another sheet and with plenty overlap that seemed a good compromise. As you can see the space below the saw is quite generous and could have been used for any other storage like these sustainers but I wanted two drawers. The drawers were made as 12mm boxes with dominoes at all vertical corners. Note I now only use the narrow setting and just take extra care with accuracy. At the bottom of each vertical piece is a rebate which in this case is 11.5mm wide and 6mm deep. The vertical parts are glued and clamped and then a piece of 12mm is cut to the exact size, the rebate glued and the base tapped into place. I don't use any fixings but I do put the drawer the right way up to check that it is tight at the bottom. I didn't want to use drawer runners as I would be removing the drawers for emptying and so I used nylon glide nails to reduce the friction. That's why the rebate was slightly less than the thickness of the drawer bottom so the vertical parts would not rub on the sled floor. Normally when using runners I make the drawer bottom slightly recessed so it is never seen from the side. The drawer box fronts were drilled for 4mm screws and the 18mm drawer front pre-drilled for the pull handle. I used a Craig clamp to clamp the space drawer fronts to the drawer boxes and drove the 4mm screws and drilled through and fixed the handles. Finally I applied a coat of shellac sealer, zinza and the job is done. I used the formulation of two thirds zinza shellac and one third industrial methylated spirits and I found this to be very satisfactory. I hope you found this helpful and in the correct amount of detail. Please comment below to guide me for the future as to the amount of detail you wish. Once again, thank you to Malcolm, my son, for the production of the video. Please help give my channel a boost by liking it if you enjoyed it. Please have a look at the other videos here, and if there are things of interest, please subscribe and click the notification bell. We have more projects and reviews in the camera, and we'll be back with you soon. Goodbye.